Welcome back to Helen Idria. Of course, like I said before I went on the break, I'm not going to be alone. I will be joined by political analyst and social commentator Izugu Chukudi, your favorite, our favorite, one of the very best that Nigeria has. It's always a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Why, yeah. do you, why do you keep blushing <laughs> whenever we say these things that are not washed for statements of fact? Well, I don't get to hear them every time, oh, especially nice. from amazing ladies. Oh. You know what, though? You should check YouTube then, because a lot of our trending news content that goes on YouTube, you have so many fans on YouTube. Everyone is like, I just love this guy. He just oh, says it as it is. How sweet. And, yeah. Wow, wow. All right, you have to give See us our usual greeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> Happy Women Wednesday. Wednesday. And I have a special um, woman crush. Okay, who is she? Now, we saw videos emanating from the National Assembly Complex yesterday. Yeah. Oh, Honorable Boma Goodhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, amazing woman. She's, she's a strong woman. She's a powerful woman. When the men were just saying, we are going to wait for other senators to come, we will now go and meet them and ask them, she confronted the maxed DSS personnel and told them to their faces that if it got to another point, Nigerians were going to rise. Now, the truth is, we might look at these issues and say, oh, uh, okay, I agree. She was being emotional. She was too angry. She was, you know. Some, somebody, but the truth some people is, even said, where was, where was this anger when there were people being killed in Benue State? I saw a couple of comments Thank like you. That. But the truth is, Nigerians need to understand that if we do not, as a people, speak collectively with one voice, understanding the fact that it is not by political affiliation, ethnic sentiment, or religion difference, that is only when the people who are supposed to be accountable will act accordingly. And I'm sure that will lead us to our first story, where the president, acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, acted swiftly to deal with the situation. And this is something we've always clamored for here on the show. You've said if people are, if the president is afraid of using the word sack, they should use the word fire. But if people have, you know, erred, they should, there should be heads rolling. They should take responsibility for such actions. Our very first story, the acting president, Yemi Oshibanjo, um, on Tuesday said the takeover of the National Assembly by security operatives earlier in the day was a gross violation of constitutional order. He said the development was not authorized by the presidency. Oshibaja's senior special assistant on media and publicity, Mr. Laolo Akonde, made the acting president's position known in a statement made available to journalists. He promised that all persons within the law enforcement apparatus who participated in the siege would be identified and subjected to appropriate disciplinary action. Now, we must see the government as acting in the best interest of the people. I don't want to look at all the conspiracy theorists. People are saying, oh, you know, this party, that party, this arm, that arm. I mean, this is how it is. But the truth is, I grew up in Lagos as a young boy. And even though it was way back in the day, I know how it was under a military regime, especially under a military dictator that a lot of people consider to be brutal. First, they suspend the constitution and they rule by edicts or decrees, and it is all out you know, it's, it's Gestapo-like style. Now, we had a situation where personnel of the DSS, you know, I would not want to use invasion. Uh, you know, just uh, took Locked. over, yeah, took over the National Assembly complex. Stopped lawmakers from going in and even members of staff. Now, certain people have argued that, oh, it would appear like, you know, certain people are taking advantage of the situation. But if you piece two and two together in Nigeria, I think that we must look forward and not always compare and contrast, because you can never compare and contrast failure for failure. Failure should not be your yardstick or your parameter. Not now, many people will tell you, in 2014, it, 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 my reaction was the same in 2014, when we saw, you know, DSS personnel clad in balaclavas, you know, that took over the streets in Ekiti State, armed with weapons and beating up people and, you know, acting like it wasn't a democracy. What Nigerians must do is set a yardstick or a standard, and what is that standard? We are not going to accept anything less than what is obtainable in developed climes. So we don't want the situation where we say, hey, under Jonathan and Unko, we did it like this. Now, under President Mamadou Buhari, we are doing it like Jones that. Don't it make is it right. Exactly. So failure should never be your yardstick for measuring your performance. It should be how it is done. Let me quickly give this example. We saw a video that went viral of a police officer in a bank in Ghana that beat up a woman 
for whatever action the woman or whatever crime the woman must have committed. Do you know that the president of Ghana addressed a, a, a world press conference stating that we are not like this and we are going to hold people accountable? They traced, it was swift. They traced the, the, the police officer, got to the root of the matter, completed the investigation and dealt with it. So in accordance with the way the acting president, you know, quickly took the decision of firing the DG, we must get to the root of this matter. Do not forget that it is still in this same Nigeria that certain people walked into the hallowed chambers, took the mace, mm -hmm. and we saw it under a flyover and in Abuja. Was done about it till today. Nothing has been done because in Nigeria, where they set up a committee, another committee will now look into the work of that committee before another committee will now review, another one will now analyze, then they will now take a finding and submit their, their, their decision before you know we are going white here, here. What we must do as Nigerians is to say this journey that we are embarking on, I mean, I should be able to tell my children the story of democracy from what I have read and from my experience and tell them that we evolved. But when you decide that you do not want to grow, that is where there's a problem. So we are not going to accept anything less than democracy in its true state. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.